Jesus one time spoke to the people who believed in him in the book of John chapter 8 and uh, verse 31 to verse 32. That if you continue in my teachings, that uh, then you are really my disciples. You are truly my disciples. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Freedom of life is so much uh, subjected to the truth you know. The truth of the word. The truth of Christ. The truth of God. Amen, amen, amen. Habari za asubuhi Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Ah uh, mpenzi mtazamaji naitwa Joel Button na nimetaka tu nikuonyeshe wimbo huo ambao umeimbwa na lugha ya Kilatini. Unasema kwamba Mungu wetu anaza nguvu ni kwa sababu alimshindania uh, Daudi wakati alipokuwa anapigana na lile jitu ambalo lilikuwa ni Goliathi. Ni siku nzuri, ni siku ya baraka, ni siku ya ushindi, ni siku ya Jumapili na ni tarehe kumi mwezi wa tano. Nami ya kwamba Bwana amekulinda. Bwana amekuwa mwema katika maisha yako. Bwana amekuwa mwaminifu haja kuachilia. Kama vile huwa ninavyokuambia kwamba weka tumaini lako kwake Mungu ni kwa sababu ukiweka tumaini lako kwa mwanadamu, mwanadamu atafika mahali na atakuachilia. Lakini Mungu huyu, Mungu aliyekuita hakuna wakati atakapokuachilia. Kwa sababu hiyo nimekuja asubuhi ya leo na nimeokoka Yesu ni Bwana. Sijaanguka na sianguki. Napigana vita vya imani paka dakika ya mwisho Kristo Yesu atakaporudi ili nikaweze kwenda mbinguni nikapewe uzima wa milele. Nimeokoka asubuhi ya leo ninamshukuru Mungu ni kwa sababu ya siku mpya ambayo amenuwezesha kuiona na vile vile ninao amani ya, a, katika mawazo yangu, katika roho yangu, katika mwili wangu ni mzima katika jina la Yesu. Na hivyo ndivyo ninavyoamini mahali ulipo ya kwamba pia wewe mzima katika jina la Yesu Kristo basi pokea salamu zangu mahali tupo pote pale ulipo wale ambao muko katika nchi yetu mahali pale unapo tutazama ukiwa na wale ambao wako nchi nje ya nchi yetu ya Kenya kuna watu wako kule ngambo kuna watu wako kule 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 Misri kuna watu wako kule kule uh, uh, kule UK wengine wako kule 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 Dubai wengine wako Qatar kuna wengine wako kule Lebanon pokea ni salamu zetu katika jina la Yesu Kristo na nimekuja hapa ni kwa sababu ya ni ahadi yangu na wewe ni kama vile huwa tunavyo ahidiana tukiachana ni kwamba neno litaendelea na nimeingia hapa asubuhi ya leo nikiwa na nguvu za Bwana nikwambie neno asubuhi ya leo mpendo wa mtazamaji mtazamaji ingawa uko hapa nyumbani ni kwa sababu bado hatujarudi katika makanisani mwetu na ndio maana tunafanya mambo haya ili neno likufikie mahali ulipo ili mtumishi wa Mungu anapokuja akupate uko tayari akulete neno la Mungu asubuhi ya leo ili likakujenge moyo na likakujenge mawazo na likakujenge hata mwili katika jina la Yesu Kristo kwa sababu hiyo usioondoke unaweza kuwasiliana nasi katika uh, katika ukurasa wetu wa Facebook mahali pale ingia tu pale wacha ujumbe mfupi na tukimalizia malizia nitasoma ujumbe wako e, mahali pale tukimalizia malizia ili nikaweze kutambua wale watu ambao huwa wanatutazama na wale watu ambao wanapenda kipindi hiki cha neno la uzima nataka nikaweze kumleta mtumishi wa Mungu lakini kabla ya hapo nataka tu nichukue e, muda kidogo nichukue tu mapumziko mafupi baadaye ninarudi lakini e, baadaye ninarudi ili nikaweze kukuletea mtumishi wa Mungu Haya, nimerudi mpenzi mtazamaji. Namba yetu ya ujumbe mfupi ni 0721 0721 Unaweza ukawasiliana na asingia kule kwa Facebook yetu ni Mwaminifu Television, kule kwa Instagram ni Mwaminifu Television na kule kwa YouTube ni Mwaminifu Television na usikose kusubscribe. Subscribe hali pale ili wakati wote tunapokuletea neno la Mungu unalipata kwa njia ambayo 
ni nzuri kabisa. Nataka tu nikaweze kulisoma neno la Mungu kwa utangulizi, alafu nikuletee mtumishi wa Mungu asubuhi leo akakuletee lile neno ambalo Bwana ameliweka ndani ya moyo wake. Nataka ufungue nami katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume. Nataka tusome matendo ya mitume ni neno tu la utangulizi. Matendo ya mitume ende na mstari wake ni wa 12 na na nitaanza hapo. Nafikiri ni mstari huo, eh mstari huo mmoja. Matendo ya mitume ni nne mstari wa eh, mstari wa 12. Na neno la Mungu linasema hivi. Mpenzi mtazamaji. Wala hakuna wokovu katika mwingine awaye yote. Kwa maana hapana jina jingine chini ya bingu waliopewa wanadamu litupasalo sisi kuokolewa kwao. Hakuna jina lingine chini ya jua ambalo tulipewa sisi wanadamu kuokolewa kwao ni jina la Yesu Kristo mwana wa Mungu. Jina hili umelipokea je? Asubuhi ya leo umeokolewa na jina hili la Kristo Yesu mwana wa Mungu. Yesu akirudi siku ya leo utakimbia upotee ama utakimbia umkaribi umkumbatie umwambie Bwana nimekuwa hapa ninakungojea uje ili tukakae pamoja na wewe kwa sababu hiyo nataka ujue asubuhi ya leo ya kwamba hakuna jina jingine binguni na hapa duniani alilopewa mwanadamu na kuokolewa kwao isipokuwa jina la Yesu Kristo Mwana wa Mungu aliye hai. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. Na kwa sababu hiyo nataka nikaweze kukuletea mtumishi wa Mungu akakuletee neno la Mungu asubuhi ya leo. Tumekuwa na Reverend Nelson Skaru kutoka kule katika kaunti ya Mombasa na ameniambia kwamba ametengeneza series. Kuna series yenye ametengeneza. Sijui series ni nini na Kiswahili. Maybe unisaidie hapo. Lakini ametengeneza series na series hiyo inaanza leo tarehe kumi na itaendelea wiki ijayo nafikiri itaisha wiki nyingine uh, kama siko kwa makosa na kwa sababu hiyo ningependa utakapoanza kuisikia hii leo series ambayo mtumishi wa Mungu ameitengeneza ukaweza kuisikia leo naomba ukakae hapo paka dakika ya mwisho wiki ile nyingine tukue pamoja hata ile nyingine tukue pamoja ili ukajue mwisho wa maneno ni kwa sababu neno la Mungu linasema kwamba mwisho wa jambo ni muhimu sana kuliko mwanzo kwa sababu hiyo utakaposikia ujumbe huu leo ujue ni series tumeanza na mtumishi wa Mungu kuna 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 ujumbe ambao ameutengeneza na ni ujumbe wa kuendeleza hawishi leo ni ujumbe atakao kuhubiri leo sadi atakuwa hapa atuhubirie hata next Sunday hiyo ingine atakuwa hapa ili akaweza kumalizia ujumbe huo na kwa sababu hiyo taki nipoteze muda nataka nikaweza kumkaribisha Reverend Lennox Kalu kutoka kule kanisa la Truth uh, Truth Discovery Center kule Mazeras katika kaunti ya Mombasa ili akaweze kutuletea neno la Mungu asubuhi ya leo kwa sababu hiyo kwa heshima kubwa karibu sana mtumishi wa Mungu ukatuletee neno la Mungu katika kipindi hiki cha neno la usima na najua kwamba tutabarikiwa ni kwa sababu ya neno hilo kwa hivyo mpenzi mtazamaji utulie hapo ili tukaweze kunenewa na mtumishi wa Mungu asubuhi ya leo maisha yako hayatabaki sawa tena ni kwa sababu neno la Mungu litakubadilisha karibu mtumishi wa Mungu na Bwana akubariki Yeah, I want to thank God for this moment once again. Uh, it's always a joy to come uh, to you with the gospel, with the word of truth. And uh, I want us to begin a series this morning uh, that we shall take it for some few days uh, because it's very important. And uh, I want to share on uh, gospel defined part 1. So I'm going to do some uh, few pieces and uh, I want to just begin with uh, part 1 gospel defined part 1. I'm so happy because uh, you are there with me and I want to us to share this truth which shall help your life and uh, help you forever. So I want you to remain tuned uh, on your screen because this word shall be a blessing to your life. I want us to pray. Father, we thank you once again uh, for giving us such a uh, time to share the word of God and uh, we are so glad that uh, you've given us such an opportunity. I pray that this word shall have a place in the hearts of your people. The Bible says the entrance of your word brings light, brings understanding to the simple. And I pray that this truth shall penetrate in the hearts of your people, bring a change, bring a difference. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Gospel defined part 1. I want us to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to verse 5. Now brothers I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you 
which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold it firmly to the word, I preach to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins. Underline that. According to the scriptures. That he was buried. Underline that. That he was raised on the third day. Underline that. According to the scriptures. And that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. So, <clears throat> gospel defined, part one. I want you to say something. As Paul was concluding his letter to the Corinthians, he reminds them of the gospel he had preached to them during his missionary journey. There is the gospel he preached to them. And so he, told, he tells them, the gospel I preached to you was able to save you and by that gospel we stand. That is so powerful. So we realize something here that uh, we are saved by the gospel and uh, we stand by the gospel. We are not saved by anything else. We who are born again, we have been saved by the gospel. We who are born again, we are saved by the gospel and we stand by the gospel. So that which has saved us is the one that enables us to stand in our salvation. I want to say this, that uh, we don't save ourselves. We have no ability to save ourselves. And we also have no ability to stand in that salvation. We are saved by the gospel and by the gospel we stand. So you see something here very, very important here where we have just read that in the gospel, Paul describes three important pillars of the gospel. Number one, that Christ died. Number two, that Christ was buried. And number three, that Christ resurrected. That's so powerful. He says that in verse three, he says that which I received, I Paul, that which I received, I passed it to you as of first importance. And he says that Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried, according to scripture, and that he was raised, according to scripture. This is the gospel I preach to you, and this is the gospel which saved you, and this is the gospel which by it you stand. Wow, that's so powerful. So, so you realize something here, therefore, that the gospel as good news is all about Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. There, we cannot talk about the gospel, my brother, my sister, who is watching me right now. We cannot talk about the gospel without talking about Jesus who came, died for us, without talking about Jesus who was buried, without talking about Jesus who resurrected. These three pillars have given the definition of the gospel. It is the good news of one who died, a sinless man who died, who was buried, and who resurrected. So, let's go, let's, let's go further to look at something very important uh, in Romans chapter 6. Uh, because of time, let, let me just uh, highlight a few things there. Uh, but this is very important. Romans chapter 6, very quickly. Uh, from uh, verse 5, actually from verse 1, let me just read, but uh, during your own time, actually chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 10, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means, we die to sin. How can we live it any longer? Don't you know that all of who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism uh, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too also may live a new life. Wow, this is powerful. We have been united with him like this in his death. We will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer live as left to sin. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Wow, that's powerful. Now, if we died with the Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, we he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, 
he died to sin once and for all. For the life he lives now, he lives unto God. So we see something here. Paul is bringing something so powerful as he writes to the Romans and he tells them something so powerful that uh, we were identified with the death of Christ. We were identified with his burial. We were identified with his resurrection. And Paul calls it baptism. I want you to see here our identity with him in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection is an aspect of identity. Now, you realize something in Luke chapter 12, verse 14 to verse 50. That Jesus said, I have to undergo this baptism. We can also read there because this is very, very important to our teaching uh, this morning. Luke chapter 12, verse 49 to verse 50. Luke chapter 12, uh, let's read uh, there please. Uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 49 to verse 50. I have come to bring fire on the earth. And how I wish it was already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo. How distressed I am until it is completed. Now, Christ's death on the cross. Christ's crucifixion was a form of baptism. Remember this time you have already been baptized by John. That is the water baptism at River Jordan. But now him going there to, on the cross to be crucified, to die, was a form of baptism. Now all who believe in Christ, they are identified into that baptism. They are identified in his death. They are identified in his burial. They are identified in his resurrection. Remember all this is an aspect of faith. And that is the totality of the gospel. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. Now, let's look at number one. Christ's death, ha, I mean, uh, as he shedded his blood on the cross, did three very fundamental things. As we read in Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to verse 15. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 uh, to verse 15. This is so powerful. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. Listen to this. When you are dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. He forgave us all our sins. Verse 14. Having cancelled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it on the cross. Verse 15. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Now we see three things here. When Christ died and shed his blood on the cross, number one, he paid for the penalty of sin. Verse 13 says this, while we were dead in our sins, he made us alive. By his blood, we were forgiven. All sins were forgiven. The sin penalty was paid for. Number two in verse 13, the law was made absolute. The law has no effect. The Bible says the handwritings that were against us. Oh, I love this, my friend. He canceled the written code, the regulations. So the law was fulfilled on the cross by his death. And number three, the devil with his power and authorities was disarmed. He was disarmed. The Bible talks about he made a public spectacle. You know, triumphing over the authorities, over the devil, by the cross. So by faith, having been baptized in his death, we have been baptized in his death by faith. Therefore, he has made us to be free from sin. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible talks about sin has no hold of us again. Where we have read in Romans chapter 6, sin has no hold of us. The law is no longer our schoolmaster. And the devil has been put under our feet. He has no authority over us again. Jesus took all authority from the enemy. Oh, the Bible says after resurrection, he appeared to the disciples and told them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Have it now, go over the world and make disciples of all nations. I want you to say something here. Sin was forgiven. The law was fulfilled. 
and the devil was disarmed. The enemy was dealt with on the cross. So that is the death of Christ on the cross. We have been identified with that by virtue of faith in the gospel. Number two, his burial. Christ's burial by faith. We were buried with him by putting the sinful nature powerless. So the, the, the burial of Christ was to put the sinful nature powerless. Was to make the sinful nature powerless. Our sinful nature by faith was buried with him. So sinful nature has no control on us. Again, we are not are controlled by the sinful nature. We who are born again, we who believe in Christ's death, in Christ's burial, sin has no hold of our lives. Sin nature has no hold of our lives. Oh, hallelujah. I love that. Number three, by faith, we were raised with him. Now, I want you to see something here. <clears throat> that Christ's resurrection gave us a new life. Oh, that's powerful. Therefore, we have new nature. We have the Christ nature in us because of resurrection. So I wanted to say something. When Jesus died on the cross, he dealt with the sin. He dealt with the law, the laws of Moses. And he dealt with the devil. But number two, he had to be buried. Why? To make the sinful nature powerless. Why Jesus was buried was to make the sinful nature powerless. Why had he to resurrect? He resurrected to bring to us the new nature, to give, to bring to us the new life. In other words, I wanted to say something. Christ's death, or oh, Christ's death, brought remission of sin. The shedding of the blood brought remission of sin. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. So sin was remitted on the cross by the shedding of the blood. But if Jesus could not be buried, and resurrect, we can only be saved. We have the new life because he resurrected. I want you to hear me very well, my viewer. We are saved because Jesus resurrected. His death on the cross brought forgiveness and his resurrection has brought salvation. So we have the new life. Oh, I love this, my brother, my sister. We have salvation because he resurrected. His resurrection has given us the new nature. His resurrection has given us the righteous nature of God. So this is the gospel. The three major pillars in the gospel, which is the good news of Christ. Oh, I mean, good news is Christ's death, burial, and the resurrection. So as I close this morning, I want you to understand something. That the gospel is the good news. Amen. It's by the gospel that we believe and we are saved. And it's by the gospel that we are able to stand. So Paul defines the gospel and he tells them to the church of Corinthians, by the gospel we are saved and by the gospel we stand. So I've shared with you, uh, my brother, my sister, I've shared with you my viewer this morning that the gospel is about Christ by death, is about Christ burial, is about Christ resurrection. That is the good news which has saved us, which has enabled us to stand. We have no other gospel to believe in. But this is the good news that can save the world. If you're not born again, if you're not believe in this gospel, I want you to repeat after me. I want you to believe. The Bible says we believe in our hearts and by the confession of our mouth, we are saved. I want you to know you're forgiven. So repeat after me. Say after me. If you want actually to receive Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you because you love me. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you because of coming to my life. I love you. You are the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. If you pray that prayer, you are saved, you are born again. Uh, you can actually uh, locate a gospel preaching church, a gospel preaching church, where you will be established in the truth, where you will stand by this truth. You are blessed and blessed forever. I welcome you in our church, 
uh, here at uh, Sam's Christian Ministry, Mazeras Truth Discover Center, Mombasa. You are blessed and blessed forever. God bless you. Amen. Ah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Na amini ya kwamba mpenzi mtazamaji na mpendwa. Umebarikiwa na neno la mungu asubu ya leo. Na amini na amini ya kwamba hata ingawa huko hapa nyumbani mutumishu wa mungu wa mekunenea. Na neno la mungu lime saidia maisha yako. Na tamani sana tukutane siku ya jumapili. Ili mahali ya memachia tukaweze kuendelea hapo. Usikose kwa sile na nasi kule kwa Facebook. Yeto ni Mwaminifu Television na vile vile kwa namba yote ujume mfupi ni 072148 na kwa sababu nataka nikaweze kumalizia malizia kipindi cha leo siwezi kosa kuwatambua wale watu ambao wamekuwa wanatazama kipindi hiki kuna mtu ambaye anaitwa wako kule wameandika eh, jumbe zao kule kwa Facebook na kuna mtu hapa anaitwa Mugamuga Moto anasema kwamba anabarikiwa sana na neno la mtumishi wa Mungu kuna mwingine anaitwa anaitwa Ndongo Gathito ye yeah, naye anasema kwamba show iko sawa na kuna mwingine anaitwa na huyu wewe anaitwa George Kitaras wewe Kitaras hii sura yako hii hii yote nilisikia akisema kwamba yeye ndiye mrembo sana kwao inatutishia lakini Mungu akubariki sana kwa sababu ya kutazama kipindi hiki asubuhi ya leo kuna mwingine anaitwa Maina Francis Karish yuko tu anasema hivyo na kuna mwingine ambaye anaitwa Joroge Power Maura anasema neno liendelee mbele katika jina la Yesu Kristo jeroge neno la Bwana ni lazima liendelee na vile vile naona mke wa naona mke wa Lennox Kalu mke wa Reverend Kalu anaitwa anaitwa Anne Kalu anasema hata yeye amebarikiwa na neno la Bwana asante sana mamu na sababu ya kutupea mtumishi wa Mungu akaweza kuhudumia maisha yetu na vile vile kuna Maina Francis Karish anasema kirinyaga kiajege west pamoja sana. Barikiwa sana uh, Maina Francis ukiwa kule Kirinyaga. Na hao ndio tu baadhi ya wale watu nimeweza kusoma jumbe zao asubuhi ya leo. Nina wale ambao wanapenda kipindi hiki na wanakitazama. Tunawapenda sana na kama sio yeye mahali tumefika hatuje kuwa tumefika hapo. Bwana asije kuwabariki. Nimeshukuru sana kwa sababu ya muda wako na vile vile nimeshukuru sana kwa sababu neno la Mungu limetunenea asubuhi ya leo. Mimi na wewe tutapatana siku ya Jumapili katika kipindi cha neno na uzima. Majina yangu naitwa Joel Barton, ninakupenda na upendo wa Kristo Yesu. Hadi wakati mwingine tutakapokutana mimi na wewe. Shalom, shalom, shalom na neno litaendelea.